today we're cooking two of my favorite cozy autumn dishes, butternut bisque soup made with homemade cashew cream and the lentil sausage rolls from Vegan Rich's blog. Out of all the amazing vegan food blogs out there, Rich's is the one I cook from most frequently. The lentil filling with walnuts and sun-dried tomatoes is so flavorful. I've only baked these a couple times so far, but I already know this recipe is going into heavy rotation. Ideally, I'd use homemade puff pastry, but since I'm short on time today, I'll be using my old standby for savory and sweet pastry dishes adapted from a recipe by David Tannis, which you can find on my blog. An earlier version of my butternut bisque is on the blog as well. Links are below. I'll be going back and forth working on these two recipes simultaneously, but to keep things less confusing, I'm gonna show you the lentil sausage rolls and then the soup. I tripled the recipe because I am cooking for my family and we always like to have leftovers. Quick tip for those of you who are just beginning to cook for yourselves, and especially if you're creative and just wanna be able to focus on your work and not worry too much about what you're eating for dinner, I'm a big fan of batch cooking. I love to just be able to reheat something quickly when I'm in the middle of drafting or revising. It feels very efficient. Put some in the fridge to eat through the week and freeze the rest for later. Your hungry but pressed for time future self will thank you. Anyway, this filling is pretty simple. It's just red onion, lentils, walnuts, sun-dried tomato, and a truckload of herbs and spices. Plus lemon juice, I almost forgot. Okay, I'm gonna take this off the heat and have a little taste. Actually needs more salt. I had not put salt in here because I there's salt in the broth. And also the sundry tomatoes I used are salted. But this is why it's important to taste as you go. I think that's enough. Don't want to double dip. Mmm, that's better. Now I'm rolling out the dough. This one has dried thyme and oregano and garlic powder. It's important to let the filling cool before I put it on the pastry. Might seem like common sense to you, but ask me how I know. These are not going to be the neatest, prettiest little pastries you ever saw, but they're tidy enough for me. You can use this dough to make pastries of any size, but one batch, as written on my blog, will yield about nine little ones. Okay, now let's make the soup. I roast the butternut squash in a pan with a cup or two of water at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes, give or take, until the squash is totally soft. Meanwhile, I've got fresh garlic and onion, which I'll saute in broth rather than oil since it's a bit healthier. Fresh sage, which I add to the saute along with cumin, salt, and pepper. Instead of using store-bought almond milk per my recipe from 2012, I'm using cashew cream since it's fresh with zero additives and cashews have five grams of protein per quarter cup serving. There is a super simple cashew cream recipe in Miyoko Shinner's The Homemade Vegan Pantry. The ratio is one cup cashews to three cups water. I have a Vitamix which makes blending the cashews a cinch. High speed blenders are an investment, but if you want to make nut milks and cheeses, fruit sorbets and all that sort of thing, they really are worth every cent. I don't have an immersion blender. I just use the Vitamix to puree the soup in batches. I put a bit of the roasted squash or sauteed onion mixture in with some cashew cream or broth and then it all gets poured into the big pot and we let the flavors mingle as it simmers. This is going to make quite a mild soup. You can definitely spice it up more if you prefer more zing. I tasted it and it needs more of everything. I also made two green sides to round out the meal. Blanched asparagus with lemon and vegan parmesan, uh, I'll include the recipe below, and a kale salad with tomatoes and kalamata olives with a lemon tahini dressing. Usually my family comes over here for dinner on Friday nights, but this time I brought the meal to them because we were gonna be carving pumpkins afterwards. Let me know some of your favorite cozy cold weather meals in the comments below, and if it's not already vegan, we can chat about how you can veganize it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Hello. 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 Hello.